I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, we're going to look at a grab bag of different tips and tricks on the FM9. All of these tips and tricks will work on the FM3 and the Axe FX3 with their respective editors as well. Essentially, I want to look at a few utility functions as well as some very handy features that are included in a few select blocks here. I'm starting with my old Strat plugged it straight into the FM9. You can see the preset on the screen where I've just got a 1987X treble amp model and my go-to cabinet IR. Let's very quickly hear what this sounds like. I'm on the neck and middle position of my Strat. <laughs> And then on the bridge, I'm getting some nice crunch right there. The first thing that I want to talk about, which is a feature that I use in every preset that I make, but I've never talked about it here on the channel before, is that there is a noise gate built in to the input blocks over here. If I click on input number one, you can see I've got controls for threshold, ratio, attack, and release, as well as the type of gate. I just normally use the intelligent gate. Essentially, all I do is just turn the threshold up a little bit. This guitar is a little bit noisier than some of my other guitars due to the fact it's got true single coils in it. And I just bring the release down to around 10 times whatever the attack is, so around 20 milliseconds. And that generally works really, really well. You probably won't even notice anything because the gate was already doing its thing when I started the video, but when I'm playing, it's not killing the tone. <laughs> And it's cutting everything off really naturally there, which I like. So you don't have to use a dedicated gate straight after input one. You can just use the gate that's built into input one. Of course, if you want to use the gate block, like say between an amp and a cab, like I often do with high gain tones, then the gate stands in its own right. But for just kind of simple noise reduction with whatever guitar you're using, I find this is a fantastic function often if you use a preset that you've downloaded from somewhere and it's not kind of reacting right this would be the first thing that i would check and it may be that the gate is cranked up too high for your particular guitar so the input gate is an awesome function another one that i really like is in the cab block the room function so you can hear the tone is very very dry at the moment <laughs> It sounds exactly the way a close mic amp would sound with no room reflections. What we can do though is rather than use a reverb block to kind of simulate some ambience, we can use this room in the cab block. So I'll do this. I'll just turn the room level up to about 35% to get started and we can have a listen to it. You can see I've got the room shape set to room. We could also set select hall if we wanted to. Let's just start with this. <laughs> Very subtle, very subtle, but it is thickening things up there. What I'm going to do is change the room shape to a hall. I'm going to crank the room size up and I'm going to add some room diffusion in there. Let's have a listen to this. <laughs> Kind of sounds like there is some subtle ambience in there. What I like though is a much more pronounced effect. So I like to turn the mic spacing up a little bit and I like to add a bit of high frequency dampening just to kind of take out a bit of that metallic ring that you sometimes get with it. So let's turn it up there. Check this out now. <laughs> It is a lovely subtle room style reverb on there and it's in the cab block. I didn't need to use another block in there. While we're talking about features in blocks, let's go over to the amp block and I want to talk about the amp block input boost. I use this in nearly all my presets. So we go down to preamp and we can select the boost type. 
the boost level and whether the boost is on or off. You also notice there is a modifier symbol right here next to the boost, which means that I can activate it with something like a control switch to turn this on and off. So I don't need a separate drive block as a boost. I can just use this built-in boost and the CC boost sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> Now, if I want to automate that, I would do this. I'm going to right click this and select the modifier source to be a control switch. And I could assign that control switch to a physical foot switch on the FM9. What I'm going to do is actually use a per preset foot switch. Just as an example, you could, of course, assign a control switch to any foot switch on any layout. So let's just do this. Let's go. Uh, what do we want here? A control switch. I want the function to be latching so that when I press it and then release my foot, it stays activated. I could give it a custom name if I wanted to as well. I've also set it to control switch number one. Let's do this. Let's just override. What am I on? I'm currently on the scenes layout on the FM9. So I'm going to override. Oh, what am I going to do? Maybe this foot switch right here. We'll just set that override to per preset number one. I guess this is another extra feature, the per preset overrides in there. So let's do this. I can now reach over and turn that boost on and off. Excuse my squeaky chair and my squeaky voice. Let's check it out. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Now I've got a dedicated foot switch just for this preset to turn that amp block input boost on and off. What I normally have, whether I'm using the FM9, the FM3, or an FC controller with the Axe FX3, is a dedicated layout to all the control switches. I'll also use the control switch per scene function on here for my live presets so that I can automate this switching of the amp input boost as well as the fat switch. I've got a dedicated Tuesday tone tip talking about all of those. Okay, the next kind of batch of tricks are going to be related to the editor. One great thing in the editor, a great utility, is this quick build. Let's say I want to add a bunch of blocks in here. Let's say I do want to add a reverb. Well, I just drag it and drop it. Let's say I want to add a delay over here. Let's say I do want to add a drive block in front of this. And let's say I want to add something like a flanger. Why not? Where's a flanger? Let's add that before the drive. So I can use this to build presets from scratch if I want to, or I can just do it to add a bunch of different blocks. Along with that, there is the scene manager function in here. So let's set up some scenes. I'm going to use the same app and I want it on in all my scenes over here. I'm going to use the same cab. But what I can do here is I can assign the bypass state and the channel of different blocks per scene. So let's do this. Let's bring up, what do I have in here? I've got a flanger, I've got a reverb, I've got a drive and I've got a delay and I want to play around with all of these. So let's just say on scene number one, I want all these effects bypassed. And let's say on scene number two, I just want to bring in the reverb and I want to bring in the delay. Let's say that on scene number three, I want to have the flanger and the reverb and the drive, but no delay. We'll just roll with those three scenes for now. In fact, let's do this. Let's do four and I will have scene three, but this time it's going to have the flanger and the drive on the B channel for each of them. So I've got a bunch of stuff going on here. We'll stay on scene one. Stay with me here as we do this. So for reverb, I'm just going to select, uh, let's do something nice and big. I'll do the chorus hall on there. The delay, I'm going to go with the stereo BBD delay and just turn the mix up. I love the way that sounds. Drive, let's go for, you know what? Super overdrive sounds good on channel A. Channel B, maybe let's go for a buzz face on there. And then for the flanger, let's go with the DAD185 for channel A, and we'll go for something like the step flanger on channel B. Okay, so I've set up all those sounds. Now I can just cycle through my scenes and look at this. All the blocks are already engaged on the channels that I want them on 
by default, I do need to go in and dial all of this in, but it does make it very easy to just scroll through the scenes. Let's see what we've got. <laughs> Next up, we'll talk about the batch reset utility in here. I've changed presets, so this is my main live preset. Let's just go into amp number one over here, and you can see that this particular preset, I've got the speaker impedance curve set to be this 4x12 5153 impedance curve. Now, this isn't the default impedance curve for this particular amp, but I really love the way it sounds. Let's say I want to set this, not just in this preset, but across different presets. What I can do is I can hold down shift and I can right click the parameter. I can go to set in multiple presets. We'll do it on all channels. And let's say I wanna set it in this preset right here on all channels and across these variations that I have over here. So we'll do that, we'll hit save. And what it's gonna do is in all of those presets change this impedance curve parameter to the one that I've selected here. So you can see it goes through, it goes through all of the channels or whatever channel I've selected and it saves the presets. And then I'll give you an example very quickly. You can see in here, my main speaker impedance curve is this four by 12, 5153. Now, if I change to the next preset and we take a look at amp block number one, which is in a different place, it's set to that 4x12 5153 impedance curve. In fact, it's gonna be that across all the different channels on there as well, even though it's not the default for whatever amp block type I have saved in there. So the batch resetter is pretty awesome. Another example that you might use that on is let's say you've got a particular room style reverb that you're using instead of that cab block reverb, or maybe you're using the cab block reverb, you could go in and you could batch reset those parameters across a bunch of different presets. So it's really, really handy if you find a particular kind of deep editing parameter you love the sound of and you just want to apply it across the board to your presets. The last utility function that I want to mention in FM9 Edit today, it's also in FM3 Edit and Axe Edit 3 is of course the Blocks and Channels library. I use this all the time to save my favorite combinations of parameters in different blocks. For example, in my live preset, I have this quad parallel delay that I've dialed in for like a delay and a chorus. It sounds like this. <laughs> So that sounds pretty awesome. If I want to save that for instant recall at any time, I can come down to the library down here. I can hit save and I'll just call it something like chorus delay. Should have moved my keyboard over. Uh, let's do this now. Let's move to a totally different preset. Let's go say to this preset right here, which I've called Volantish. So this one already has a multi-tap delay block in it doing a bunch of cool stuff. But what I can do is just come down here and I can select this chorus delay. And it has recalled my settings. Now, this block was set up for parallel operation. So what I'm gonna do is actually just drag it up here. Then I will run cable so that it's running in parallel. Now this clean preset is gonna have those same chorus delay settings. <laughs> The 
Here's some of my favorite utilities and hidden features in the FM9. I would love to hear from all of you which features in the fractal editors or in the blocks do you find yourself using all the time? And maybe in the future, I will take all of those suggestions and roll them into another video like this. Let me know your thoughts. And of course, any requests for future videos, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.